This is your DWZA Profiles. I'm your host, Abigail Jacobs. Joined on this episode by local actress Gunya Diohorn, we talk about working while becoming a new mother, being at the forefront of Indigenous representation, and get the scoop on all her newest projects. This is your DWZA Profiles. I'm your host, Abigail Jacobs, joined on this episode by Gunya Diohorn and her new son. <laughs> Yeah, he's here too. <laughs> You're Can't a busy get lady. Rid of him. <laughs> yeah, no, don't get rid of him. <laughs> I'm so happy that you brought him in with you today because this is real life. Yes, this is. <laughs> and uh, you are a busy lady. So thank you for taking time to join us today. Um, I always like to start with a little bit of community connection through family references. So we have your son here. And can you also tell us a bit about your family here in Gunawage? Yes, um, my mother is Gondineta Horn. And my sisters are Oji- Dr. Ojisto Horn, Kahande Horn Miller, and Winique Horn Miller. And um, yeah, my baby's my baby daddy <laughs> is Wajo Splicer. <laughs> shout out! <laughs> yeah, shout out! What up? <laughs> and your your son is eight months old. He is. He's eight months old, and he's uh, yeah, he's a fall baby, born in November of last year. Through, uh, yeah, of course, he's very vocal right now. Yeah. Um, I had a C-section. Oh, wow. Yeah, it was emergency C-section. Yeah. But, uh, I mean, you know, I have nothing to compare it to. So I was like, a C-section? It was, it's a brutal, uh, I mean, I guess this is what we're talking about. But it's a brutal recovery, man. Yeah. And I was like, I was kind of mad that nobody really talks about it. You know, people are always like, oh, well, she had a C-section. Like, it was just like a walk in the park. I'm like, it is major surgery. And like, I had to recover. I couldn't cough, sneeze, laugh for like, for like a few, without it like being excruciatingly painful. Yeah. But it was worth it. It's all for you, (laughs) baby man. (laughs) Well, congratulations on that, though. Thank you. And uh, just makes you stronger Mm -hmm. and moving through uh, the mama life. You've been continuously still working now and Mm -hmm. doing a lot of different projects. And that's what I'm really excited to talk to you about today. And uh, you're in the guest chair today, where usually you're a podcast host. Yes, I am. And you have two podcasts that are airing right now. Uh, You were doing Coffee with My Ma since 2018. Yeah, yeah. And you now have like 14 episodes out of Coffee with My Um, Mom? No, we have 13 episodes out. And then um, I've been recording for season two. And I just wanted to change some things up. Like every few episodes, like have a different person come in. And so I've been sort of trying to balance like just doing interviews when I can. So I got my mom's bestie interviewed a few days ago. (laughs) Cool. Yeah, so that was my my sort of project that I took, uh, like that that I basically do by myself with this one editor who works with me, uh, Rick Penn. But um, I'm also doing telling our twisted histories, and yes. I'm just the host of that. I didn't write it. There's a guy, an awesome guy named Ozzy Michelin, who wrote it and directed it, and it's produced by Terre et Nou and CBC. Mm-hmm. And that one, I'm so proud to be a part of it. I'm so happy that they asked me because I just think it's a, it's a, it was a really cool concept. And um, just, yeah, just being able to be a part of that is really satisfying. It's a, basically, um, it's got 11 episodes. I think the last one came out this past Monday or it comes out next Monday. And every episode focuses on a different word and that word is sort of broken down by different indigenous people from the East Coast and talking about how it makes them feel, what we think of. Uh, and it's, I guess, the underlying theme of it is decolonizing our vocabulary. Mm-hmm. And so, yeah, there's words like God, mm-hmm. uh, school, discovery, Pocahontas, savage. Well, I really yeah. liked like, and I just got to listen to this one recently, the one about uh, family names yeah. and different things like that. You hear the different histories of people's references. And and it, like, I mean, you mentioned it's a lot of people from the East Coast. We have a couple of Gunawage Ronu who are also on the show mm-hmm. uh, in the podcast and talking about their point of view and how different words come uh, for them. And I, I really, I do. I love the podcast. And both of these are available uh, just like your DWSA's podcasts on Apple Podcasts and all the different spots. And so what kind of reception have you been getting for these? Because it's so different from... 
like your film and television, you know, podcast is kind of a different realm. Have you been getting uh Uh yeah, no, I got a lot of great feedback. I mean, every but people <laughs> That's his feedback for that. Uh <laughs> You know, a lot of people seem to really, really love um, telling our twisted histories. It's really nice having a nice reception from non-Indigenous people. But I feel like when you have Indigenous people being like, hey, that was really cool. Hmm. It's like even better. <laughs> yeah. You know, like it's like, oh, cool. OK, they like what they're they're picking up what I'm putting down, you know, and yes. the, the support from the Indigenous community, I feel like is always the most important to me. And yeah, so I've been getting a really good reception. And it, it I mean, podcasting is, it seems like it's so different from what I normally do, but it kind of came into my life at sort of the right time. And is this sort of <laughs> this medium that I really, really enjoy? <laughs> oh my God. So yeah, it does seem like it's very different from my my usual work, but I just feel like it came into my life at the right time and it was like a really cool way to express myself without because I feel like I mean you guys know this is a podcast. Like you could do whatever you want. Mm -hmm. You could literally do whatever you want. And I like I really like the freedom in that and I felt like it was a really cool way to figure out how I wanted to express myself. You yes. know what I mean? And I'm I'm actually you know, I, I was kind of freaked out because somebody contacted my reps asking about the television rights to Coffee with My Mom. No way. And I was like, it kind of like lit a fire under me. And I was like, yeah, I, I kind of had always pictured doing something with it, but I didn't know what. And it spans so many decades that to do a live action thing, it would be really costly, hmm. you know? And uh, so I decided I'm going to do an animated series based nice. on coffee with my mom yeah yeah yeah. <laughs> yeah so basically i'm gonna do an animated series uh based on coffee with my mom and i feel like you know i mean we kind of have a history in animation <laughs> on doing by the rapids and i don't know it kind of just feels like the right thing to do with the right direction to go with that project and it yeah. can stay fun and you know, keep that comedy in there and do different things with the images based uh, in comparison to like live action. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. So that's super exciting. I'm really excited yeah. for that next step in the project. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's cool. I'm glad we got the scoop on that one. <laughs> and um, like how you mentioned, you know, it's really important to you for, to hear your feedback from the indigenous community, but that you do have, I mean, you've been in the industry for over a decade. Yeah, almost a decade and a half, actually. 16 yeah. years. Wow. Yeah, I know. And and this is, and I don't just mean like, oh, you know, kind of dabbling or whatever. You've been successfully working in the industry mm -hmm. for over a decade and a half. Mm -hmm. And um, you've been not always just playing native roles in the beginning. Mm -hmm. And now you're getting to be part of this change in the tides of diversity and representation, mm -hmm. which I think is really important. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, how how was that for you from going for just like, oh, you know, fun characters and being Dorothy on Supernatural? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. And now getting to be part of, uh, you said you have like a guest starring role on uh, Reservation Dogs mm -hmm. and all these different things. So how is that for you as and your career? Yeah, it's super exciting. I mean, I remember when I left theater school and I was like, OK, I'm never going to get cast as an Indigenous character because the way that. And I talk about this often. It's like the way that we're represented. I don't look like that. And that's just, you know, the way it is. <laughs> that's the way that Hollywood sees it. Yeah. The way that the way that Hollywood has put us in this box, you know. And so but then more and more, I started to see a shift even in my, you know, it is it is 16 years, but it still feels very short or something <laughs> for some reason. It feels like, you know, in my short career, I've seen an actual shift in the way that we're rep represented and, you know, like getting to do something like Letterkenny and playing Tannis and playing yeah. this like badass, you know, I've got blue eyes, I've got light skin. I, I look like everybody here and not everybody, but like, you know, I, I look like a lot of people here in Ganawage and, mm -hmm. you know, try and tell somebody in Ganawage that they're not Mohawk because they got <laughs> blonde hair, blue eyes. <laughs> you know what I mean? So the fact that I get to kind of represent this sort of, you know, like we don't all look like that that one image and mm -hmm. um so it's been really exciting to be a part of that and then seeing a lot of my friends like i remember i met sterling 
who wrote uh, Reservation Dogs and all those writers in the 1491s, like 10 years ago at, uh, at Imaginative. And it's just so cool to see how everybody has, is sort of gone off and doing their things and like really succeeding in all of these little, you know, I'm up here doing like letter Kenny and stuff like that. And they're like making waves in Hollywood now and writing exactly. on all these amazing things. And the fact that we get, I get to keep, you know, I get to work with them is, uh, is really awesome. And it's really, yeah, it's, it's, uh, I'm really, really proud to be part of what's going on right now. Definitely. Mm -hmm. And uh, you mentioned Letter Kenny. You're filming some of the latest stuff with your son in tow. <laughs> yes. <laughs> mm. And uh, Letter Kenny is one of those shows I can only watch it like max three episodes at a time because yeah. of the hilarity. Yeah. Like it hurts my face and I have to just pause and let the <laughs> comedy like really give it the appreciation and the time. And uh, just how was it for you working on this show and the latest season and yeah. Um, well, it was so crazy because we were supposed to shoot. And then obviously, like every conversation, probably the pandemic happened. Yeah. Um, so that paused it for, I think, like over a year. And then so we finally got to shoot in this past May and June. Mm -hmm. We did two two seasons. And uh, yeah, I thought I was going to be shooting while I was pregnant. But then it turned out I was shooting and had a baby. Yeah. <laughs> because it was postponed for so long it it was really cool I felt really really supported by everybody um everybody he's everybody's favorite baby on set and you know it's really nice because the show is um you know we've been doing it for I don't know seven or eight years now and and we're like family now you know and so I I'm the one who had the baby and so he's basically everybody's nephew and um, it was just really nice for that to be a group of people that I saw coming out of the pandemic, coming out of lockdown. You know what I yeah. mean? It was like not all these new faces. It was like old familiar faces that I, I, and you know, it was an easy transition for me because it was, I'm so comfortable in the environment of shooting Letterkenny yep. that it was easy to just like step right back on set and be like, oh yeah, okay. It's like riding a bike, you know? Yeah. Because getting back to your family again. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. But yeah, I started working when he was like six weeks old I was doing uh audiobooks oh wow yeah so I was able to like bring somebody to ha to watch him and then I, if he was hungry I'd go out in the you know the where all the technical stuff is and yeah. nurse him and then yeah and then I started actually being on set I think when he was five months old on reservation dogs we went to Oklahoma and then letter Kenny and then I just shot uh we went from Sudbury, where we shoot Letterkenny, to Lakefield, Ontario, which is outside of Peterborough. And we shot a movie called Alice Darling. Mm -hmm. And that's with Anna Kendrick and Wumi Mosako. <laughs> yes. Oh, I love her. I love, I love both of them. Oh, my God. Wumi is amazing. Yes. Yeah. Just finished watching her on Loki. Yes. Loved her in Lovecraft Country. Yes, yes. And it's so exciting. Like, I mean, the people that you're getting to work with, the places mm -hmm. that you're traveling, all this kind of stuff. Like I said, you're a busy lady. I am. And I was like, I, for the, I remember when I was done shooting the movie and I, we, me and him were just in Toronto and I was tying up like some other projects, like other personal projects. I, uh, I texted my boyfriend and I was like, I need like, I need like a real vacation. Like I've never <laughs> like said this in my life before, but like, I'm, I'm like, I'm so finished. Like I'm actually finished. It's been two months of, it's not like he's a hard baby, but it was like juggling you're a new mom yeah, new. and you're still working and revving your career and you're still keeping it up. And yeah, that's exhausting. It is, but it's all, it's all good. Like, it's like, it's everything that I wanted, you know, Yeah. <laughs> it just really having the baby too really put a lot of things into perspective for me. Like if I'm going to be on set or if I'm going to be working on something, I want it to be something that I'm really passionate about and not just something that I'm just trying to do to put on my resume. You know what I mean? Because now if I'm working on a project, it's going to take time away from spending it with my son. So now, yeah, the projects are. Well, now yeah. your next project uh, and you're moving kind of into the behind the scenes things with production and working with a fellow Gunawal Gerdon who rocks and white bean. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we're doing a it's this story that I grew up hearing about um, where my grandfather, Joe Horn, faked his death and ran away and joined the circus. 
And so I was always like, <laughs> really, that's Grandpa Joe? <laughs> yeah, I'm like, that's amazing. And uh, so we started, um, and Roxanne knew about the story. And I was like, we need to make this together. You know, I never really partnered up with anybody from Kahnawake in my, like, you know, in the last like 10 years. And it just only felt right. Like we were both at a place in our careers, still kind of, you know, not like we're, we were both becoming like pretty successful in our, in our respective fields in the, in our, in the industry. Yeah. And so it kind of felt right to, to move forward with this project with her because she's so talented. So uh, we got a grant to, um, to make a short documentary as well as do a first draft of a, of a feature film. And she's been writing on that feature film. I'm like co-creator of that. And we also did the documentary right before the pandemic hit. So, okay. I, so it was sort of hard to like finish it, but I just tied it up last time I was in Toronto and I'm really excited about that. The documentary is just sort of, you know, what it's like to try and find out your own, about your own personal history when, hmm. when it's made to be very difficult to <laughs> to do that, especially being yeah. Indigenous and how the kind of like, you know, the mess around residential schools and the church and like what was going on in Gunawage at the time and how families were divided and how stories, you know, sometimes you just have to accept that you're not going to know the full story and yeah. that's it, right? So yeah, we so we did that documentary and I showed it to some of the family last week and they said they really liked it. So I'm excited Good. about that. And then the feature film, I think we're just sort of moving along on that as we both we're also also doing our own pr other projects like yeah. you know working to like pay the bills and stuff so the documentary when uh, is that going to be released are you doing a festival thing i think or? we're going to send it around to festivals and then hopefully sell it to a network or something yeah yeah it's only it's about 14 minutes long okay yeah so it's like a nice short the documentary yeah good but i'm glad uh, and especially when it's something that's so close to home that you got to show it to your families and mm -hmm. kind of get their yeah like not of respect for it yeah, as well. yeah exactly yeah very nice and uh as you mentioned as well there's alice darling that you worked on and we're still waiting on a release date for that because i'm really looking forward to this oh. one yeah, it's different. I mean, I don't think anybody's ever seen Anna Kendrick do something like this. Mm -hmm. It's very like, I think it's going to be a really visually beautiful film. And the director is the, her name is Mary Nye. Um, she's the daughter of not Bill Nye, the science guy. <laughs> the other Bill Nye. I always have to clarify that. <laughs> My don't mom's get like, too oh, excited. I know him. And I'm like, not the science guy, ma. <laughs> Bill Nye, he's in Shaun of the Dead, you know? He's like, I ran it under a cold tap. Anyway, it was, it's his daughter. She's an amazing director. And I think cool. this is going to be really going to like, I think she's going to make some really amazing things in her career. I'm really excited to see Alice Darling as well, because it was such a cool. Also, like I said, I went from like Letterkenny to going into doing this film. And it was on a lake in Ontario with a bunch of cool women and it, yeah I just felt really special to be a part of it like I said if I'm going to be doing something I want it to be worth my time mm -hmm. you know yeah awesome so we're looking forward to that I mean all the different projects that you have and your hands full with your beautiful son uh and in your work with Letter Kenny there is uh news that I hadn't known again another scoop that's coming from you as far as I know that you're branching off within the Letter Kenny family as well yeah, so I'm really, really excited that they asked me to be to come on as a consulting producer uh, and eventually, you know, and, and kind of for this Letterkenny spinoff called Shorzy. And it's a hockey show. If you watch the show, Shorzy is like the hockey guy. <laughs> OK, you obviously watch the show. I'm so excited. <laughs> and um, and I was like, OK, but like I'm, you know, I know as, about as much about hockey as an average person who lives in Canada, but yeah. <laughs> but half of the cast, the main cast is going to be Indigenous because it's hockey in Canada, right? <laughs> There's a lot of like Indigenous representation in it. And so they brought me on to be a consultant and eventually and to to kind of like I'm going to be shadowing the showrunner and the and the uh, director. So Jared and uh, and Jacob, who I know very well, obviously, from Letterkenny. And I knew um, Jacob since I was like, since like 2008 when I did the Trotsky. Nice. So, yeah, they're kind of like taking me under their wing to learn so that I can eventually do 
that uh, for my own show, should I want? It's basically an amazing opportunity that I can't say no, no to, right? Of course. <laughs> but I, it's going to be really, I, I'm really, really excited about it because I don't think, you know, there's like, there's stuff like Rutherford Falls and reservation dogs that are happening in the States. And, you know, there was Trickster up here, unfortunately not going anymore, but I'm really glad that I get to help kind of take something like this, this franchise that is Letterkenny and really kind of help our representation and help our image be diversified on screen, you well, know? And especially, yeah, because you want the correct representation to yeah. happen. And the work that you've already been doing in Letterkenny, and I mean, using Ganya Geha words mm -hmm. and our kinds of jokes, and it's so refreshing to be able to see our humor as a consumer of the media. Yeah. When I am the audience viewer and I'm watching these shows like Letterkenny and like Rutherford, and I am dying because I know how funny First we Nations are. people I know, are. I know. And, and it's just so... It's so nice to see that. I'm really excited because the hockey element I know nothing about, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but the indigenous element, but I'm willing to learn, you know, about the hockey stuff, but the uh, indigenous side of stuff is, uh, and the fact that they, like, any question I have, basically, they'll answer, you know? And, yeah. And to do it at such a, within this well-established show, I get to... I don't know, like at the caliber that it's at, that's yes. where I get to learn. That's what I'm trying to say. Yeah. I mean, you're building yourself an impressive career uh, portfolio of work. How can everyone stay up to date with everything that you have going on? You can follow me on Instagram. I'm uh, and I'm taking a little social media break because it's just been really intense for the last two years. Right. You yeah. Know, with the pandemic and everything. Um, so I'm on Instagram at K-A-N-I-E-H-T-I-I-O. And on Twitter at the same, so at Ganitio. And yeah, I, oh yeah, there was one other thing <laughs> that yeah. I'm doing that I forgot to mention. So I wrote this feature on my own uh, and it's called Seeds. And I'm pitching that at Fantasia right now. Like it's like I did like a video <gasps> pitch of it. And at it's Fantasia. A, it's a genre movie. Ooh. It's a comedy, comedy kind of like horror thriller home invasion movie and it's about these bad guys who are trying to break into my house to steal the last non-genetically modified corn beans and squash seeds oh my god <laughs> <laughs> yeah so and then i get like i turn the tables and like basically get super violent with them and like yeah it's gonna be gory <laughs> bloody funny and i'm hopefully like i have producers who are attached who are making it happen i'm really excited about it because I think it's not really, we don't really do a lot of genre, like in the sense that I want to do it. You know, I just want it to be sort of borderline B movie nice. horror, you know, but also talking about something that's like very important. I think, you know, the seeds are really, you know, that's no, like a No, for sure. Real... But you can go as crazy and campy as you want yeah. with it. And even though it seems like, you know, it's, it's going to be like a far-fetched idea because you're saying it's specifically corn, beans, and squash, yeah. you know, and that's hilarious. But at the same time, you can. But I can, but it's also this like, you know, microcosm of a, of a larger story, which is the invaders coming in and taking our, all of our resources. Right? Yep. Yeah. So, so I'm really excited about that because I feel like this group of people in here would really like that project <laughs> when I eventually get to do it. And hopefully we'll do it. Uh, yeah, hopefully next year. Cool. Yeah. I love your brain. I love all the different <laughs> pots on the burners yeah. and the ideas. And I'm really excited to see everything that's coming from it. Oh, thank you for having me in here. Even though, thank you for having us. Like, he's yeah. just... This is life. <laughs> I know. I was like, uh-oh, I have to bring him. But you guys have been... Yeah, this is great. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for listening. I'm Abigail Jacobs with Your Diwase Profiles. Your Diwase would like to thank the Community Media Strategic Support Fund for supporting this initiative.